appreciate it very much. And we're going to turn now to a question facing Democratic presidential candidate Barack Obama this morning. The Illinois senator has said that he regards it as one of his mistakes that he had a relationship on the purchase of his home with a political operative who is facing multiple counts of wire and mail fraud, among other charges. Well, this week, a judge vaulted the name of that operative back into the news, and ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, decided to look into it. Brian. Good morning, Diane. Uh, senator Obama says no lobbyist would be permitted to work in his White House. And as a state senator in Illinois and now in Washington, he has pushed new ethics reform laws, all of which makes his relationship with an accused Illinois political fixer and influence peddler all the more unusual. His name is Tony Resco, known in Illinois politics as a backroom operator who did favors and raised campaign money for politicians and benefited in return. Resco will go on trial next month to face charges growing out of a three-year-long undercover FBI investigation involving bribes, kickbacks, and extortion. Today we unseal two indictments against Antoine and Tony Resco. Both involve uh, efforts to uh, uh, illegally obtain millions of dollars. There was no mention of Senator Obama in Resco's indictment. But as he sought to post bail, it emerged that Resco had quietly played a role in Obama's purchase of a new home. Obama bought the house on Chicago's South Side in June 2005, after he had been elected to the U.S. Senate. According to Obama, the owner wanted to sell the house together with a next-door vacant lot, which Obama apparently did not want. Instead, Resco's wife bought the empty lot, for full price, $625,000. And according to Obama, he bought the house, paying $1.65 million for $300,000 under the asking price, all on the same day. Obama says the price was dropped because the house had been on the market for some time. But even civics groups that praise Obama's record on ethics were troubled by his involvement with a man of Resco's reputation. Our only concern has been the timing and our wish that the senator had been a little bit more sensitive to the emerging dark cloud over Mr. Resco's head. For his part, Obama has given a series of various explanations about the deal. First, he told the Chicago Tribune that he didn't recall what his conversations were with Resco. Four days later, he told the Chicago Sun-Times that he did recall telling Resco about the property. Last May, as a candidate for president, Obama acknowledged to George Stephanopoulos that Resco could become an issue, even though everything had been above board and legal. Uh, but it raised the possibility that here was somebody who was a friend of mine who was doing me a favor. And I said it was a boneheaded mistake. Senator Obama told one newspaper that he knew Resco was under investigation at the time. But the Washington Post says Obama told them he had no idea of Resco's brewing troubles. The first answer was more accurate. We found more than a hundred stories in the Illinois papers in the preceding five months detailing allegations that Resco was a corrupting influence in Illinois politics, including a Sunday editorial in the Chicago Tribune ten days before the House purchase, focusing on Resco and his behind-the-scenes connection to the Illinois governor. By our count, Resco and people in his circle have given Obama more than $120,000 for his U.S. and state Senate campaigns. A spokesman for Obama says the senator has donated 44000 of that to charity since the indictments in Chicago. And the senator insists no favors were asked of him from Resco and none was granted. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to move on now to new warnings for parents about the common drugs in